Hey, it's Sebastian from the Metal Gods Meltdown, and this evening I'm joined by... Hi, uh, Danny from The Treatment. Hey, it's great to be chatting to you this evening. Waiting for Good Luck is a totally addictive album, and if I may say so, your strongest release to date. Thanks a lot. How pleased are you with it, and are you feeling a bit anxious or impatient waiting for the release day? Oh, well, we're, we're blown away by it. Like We, we knew with, the, with this album that we were going out to... Uh, blow like power crazy our previous record out of the water so we knew we had to make a few changes um in the process of this record so it was the first record that we got to play like completely live and um obviously due to lockdown and stuff we had a lot more time on our hands than we have done in the past so we did a lot of pre-production and stuff so by the time we got into the studio we like the band were like unbelievably tight and stuff so we we just knew go well, once we heard this record back and recorded it, we knew it was a massive step forward for us. So we were just blown away. We just want to get back, get on the road now. You know, what I mean, it's, we've, we've we've done our time of uh, waiting around. Yeah, I can imagine, and it's actually an apt title for the album these days of total uncertainty, isn't it? As well. Yeah, definitely. That was that was sort of the theme for the album, to be honest, because it was like throughout the whole album, our backs were against the wall. You know, what I mean, like with our bass player leaving and, and COVID and stuff like that. So, like, the fact that we even managed to get an album done throughout this whole pandemic was unbelievable in itself. I can imagine, man. I mean, even the album cover sums it up, doesn't it? The whole world has been into a lockdown and, like, you're like, yeah. fuck this, <laughs> basically. Yeah, exactly. I think every one of us has been in the position of that album cover at some point in the last year, so... <laughs> Can imagine. Okay, this is a question you get asked a lot, but I've got to ask you: Which song would you say is your favourite today on the album, and why? I don't know. As, as you said, we've, we've had this question before, and it's it's one of them things because we're so close with the album, it's, it's hard to judge. And it's like being as we haven't had a chance to actually ex- experiment with the songs live in that. I don't really know at this moment in time because, and like. There's some songs that are so, like are great, and then you take them out and play them live, and they don't work as much. Then other ones become your favourite. But I think at the moment, I'd probably say something like Van Press because it, I just love the energy of that track, and it's like a real old school ACDC sort of number. That's what I was going to say. That's got a definite ACDC vibe for it, hasn't it? Yeah, definite. definite. I'm sure there's a little bit of it nicked off an ACDC song somewhere as well. I think it's one of the opening yeah, chords. <laughs> Yeah, we're one of them bands that we're, we, you know what I mean, we don't hide the fact that we're heavily influenced by a lot of the classic bands, you know what I mean? And yeah. It's like, it, it's, it's, one, it's one of them things, we've, we've probably re- we've probably taken bits from other places without knowing, you know what I mean? But we've, we've moulded it into our own sound. Totally, man. Okay, so on album release date, I mean, I know you've got some gigs sorted for like later on in the year we'll talk about that in a minute but do you plan to do a live album stream on release date or is that something you'd rather not do uh yeah we're, we're, we're playing it by here at the moment like it all depends obviously on these lockdown regulations and whether we get out or not i think if it goes any later into the year without plans being able to gig then potentially but we'd rather try and hold off the live stream gigs if we can because we want people, like with this album, we want their first impressions to be experienced live as opposed to a, a webcam, you know what I mean? Absolutely. We're such, a, we're such a live, live band, you know what I mean? We feel that, like, to give off, like, what we want to give off, you've got to see the band live, you know what I mean? So, I think, fingers crossed everything works out in the next few weeks and everything goes through according to the plan. But obviously, if it took us later into the year, like December time, then we'd probably think about it. But until then, we're going to steer clear from the live streaming and hopefully get fans to come down to our show. Fully understand that. I mean, I've seen you a few times. You're definitely a band that feeds off the live performances and that without a doubt. And you are booked in for some festival appearances later in the year. How confident are you that they'll happen? And how do you think the festival landscape will even look? I mean, what's it going to be like? probably like 80 percent confident it'll happen like last year we're in, a, we're in a different position this year because we've got the, we've actually got a vaccine you know what i mean and there is people taking it and it's uh, like i've become one of them people that are like every morning i'm out, like, up looking at the, the stats of covid you know what i mean but like it's um like there's less less deaths and stuff so it's definitely become safer and i think to be honest as far as festivals and stuff 
it's going to damage the bigger festivals like Download, Reading, Glasto and stuff. But I think like the little underground festivals are really going to come through and find their way through this whole pandemic, you know what I mean? Like yeah. all of the Wild Gravity Fest, all the ones we're doing. There's some of the best British lineups. Like there's been on festivals for probably the last 10, 20 years. So I think it's so nice to see a whole festival full of homegrown bands that sometimes don't necessarily get looked at due to being like England having so many bands from all over touring. It's going to be a great chance uh, to, for punters to discover like homegrown acts, you know what I mean? Couldn't agree more, mate, absolutely. So I think it's one that you're doing on a Friday night and then Saturday's Ricky Warwick headlining as well, so... That's yeah. fucking amazing. I love Ricky Warwick. Um, and we'll go off subject there. You have been lucky enough to have toured with Kiss, Motley Crue, the list goes on. But would you say there's a particular life highlight that stands out for you so far in your career? I definitely think, like, I think the thing, uh, Kiss was so massive. Like, it's almost like it's, it's always there. You know what I mean? Like, I find a lot of the band, like, a lot of, a lot of people know the band. For, oh, they're the band that went out to tour with Kiss, you know what I mean? So, I think it's like that was such a like massive like part of our our career, you know what I mean? Like it's like the biggest scale touring like a band could ever dream of getting, you know what I mean? And to go out there, like we wasn't even expected to get it. Like it was one of them things. Like obviously because Nicky Six discovered the band, and I think it was by fluke because our first album is called This Might Hurt, and he's our uh, first 6am record is called This Is Gonna Hurt. That's so I feel that like he might have like, look, gone to look up his own album reviews or whatever and ended up coming across us. And then he really, really liked our, our first single. So he put out a tweet about it saying, check this band out, they're great. And we, were, we were blown away by that as it, as it was. And then there was like rumours that like that Motley Crue and Kiss were going to go out and like they were thinking about taking a, 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 an up-and-coming band and they were thinking about us. Well, I don't give a damn. Like that's that's just ridiculous talk. And then the next next thing we know, Nicky Six announced on his Twitter that we were the support band and we were going to be going out on the road for for three months. We we were blown away, and it's just like the like the varsity of how big America is when you go out there. You can understand why a lot of bands don't get the opportunity because you've got to go out there for three to four months to make it worthwhile. But it was like just just to stick, share the stage with Nicky Six, Tommy, like. Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, it was just, it was beyond like anything we could have ever imagined. Going back in time then, can you remember the first time you ever played live and how it felt to have people watching you? Yeah, uh, one of our first ever gigs was, we played like, it was in Dagnan called Music Tech. It's not even there anymore. It was like a it was like a rehearsal studio that used to double up as like a little sort of like nightclub. And I played there for like, I think it was a battle of the bands or something like that. And it was, I don't know, I, I, I think I kind of took it quite well to be fair, because obviously I've got, I've, I've been brought up with, with a musical background my dad managing us and being a musician so I think like before I even got a chance to go out and, and play live I was drilled by him from an early age of like how to play tight how to play to a metronome like playing with a band and that sort of thing so I think if anything of anything I've done in my life that, that was the one thing I, I took to natural you know what I mean and I think like being as I've always been around music and around bands and that I had a sort of idea from an early age of what it was all about you know what i mean so I've, I've been lucky in that sense that I, I kind of took it took it like to music like a duck to water you know so if you were stuck in quarantine for a year which musician dead or alive would you have with you oh i don't know um i'd want someone like upbeat maybe like a bond scott or something like that you know what i mean like a, a real character to to boost the morale <laughs> totally man <laughs> all right and so if one of the songs for your new album could appear on a soundtrack or any film or tv series which one would you choose that's not a question uh i think it's been so long since i've listened to the album <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for my copy in post. <laughs> um i'd say eyes on you would be a cool one like if in some sort of i don't know like murder mystery or, or something like that because the whole 
whole thing about that song is like uh, the point of view from like the woman being strangled by a, a murderer, you know what I mean? Like, how do I look from underwater? So it's like, so that sort of, uh, yeah, like maybe like a, 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 I don't know, some sort of murder mystery program or, or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I've done a thing. I'll come back to you in an hour. <laughs> no worries, man. Okay, can you finish this sentence then? Everybody needs the treatment in their life because... Uh, because we are an original rock and roll band and we pull no punches and what you see is what you get. Brill. Uh, can you tell us why we should check out Waiting for Good Luck? Uh, we should check out Waiting for Good Luck because it's... We're a, we're a British classic rock band, and it's it's great to get UK rock back in the charts and in in into the the public eye again. And I think with this whole new wave of classic rock movement, I think it's going to be a, a massive thing to come in the future. And I think people should be getting behind the bands that are going right now. Excellent answer, right? This is just a quick fire round, either or either sort of fun ones as well. So first yeah. one, vinyl or digital. Uh, I love the sound of vinyl, but digital is more convenient. <laughs> totally. Bloodstock or download? Uh, I think download. I think we'd go down like, like a lead balloon of bloodstock. <laughs> wine or beer? I don't mind red wine, but I think normally I'd take beer. Cool. Denim or leather? Uh, leather. And the final one, Boris Johnson or Kermit the Frog? Kermit the Frog. <laughs> all right mate thank you so much for your time do you have any final words for your fans and our listeners uh yeah just keep supporting the band um everyone go out and pre-order their copy of the album it comes out on the 9th of april and yeah just keep following us on facebook and, and thanks for supporting us and uh keep spreading the word hey this is danny from the treatment and you're listening to the metal gods meltdown we're in the rat trap rat race and there ain't no escape